Hey guys, Billy here. I'm a multi gladiator hunter, and this video is 3's gameplay of Thug Cleave with an Asarogue and a Disc Priest. This comp is extremely good right now because of the insane damage it deals and the fact that it has a lot of CC. This is very important in a meta, especially one which is as fast as the current one in Dragonflight Season 1. So let me know if you guys enjoy this and if there are any other videos which you guys would like to see. And don't forget to sub to ensure that you won't miss out on any of the Hunter content. And you can catch me live on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash billywobs and you can join my Discord. I'll put the links to both of these in the description and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so for this first game we're against a Rested Rid with an Unholy and a DH. So we're starting on the DH to see if we can get Blur early. And then DH might become a kill target later on. And the DH does actually use his blur here, which means he is now a kill target. I trinket this stun and then run back into the dome, even though the DK gripped me out. I also decide to use my wall just to try and reduce the damage which I'm going to take. And then I stun the healer. I then throw a trap onto the healer, which doesn't land because he manages to trank it. But it's not the end of the world. Um, the DH is now fairly low and he doesn't have blur, so we know that we're going to be able to kill him soon as long as we don't die. Therefore, I'm just kiting it away from the DK and trying to stay close to my healer so that I don't die or take too much unnecessary damage. So now we get a sap on the druid, followed by a kidney, which gets his trinket. The DH also had another walk. He doesn't have blur yet, so we're going to be able to land a kill very soon. The druid doesn't have that much healing. I land a big kill command into a kill shot, and this actually finishes off the DH. So this game, we're against a Reset Druid with an Asa and a Shadow Priest. So I just start doing damage onto the Shadow Priest while my rogue is still in stealth. The reason for this is that we want to try and force some of the Shadow Priest cooldowns without actually needing to get the Rogue out yet. So they grip the trap, um, my Rogue lands a kick on the Master Spell, and now I'm just doing damage to the Rogue. The reason for this is that I want to try and force the Rested Rid to Oom, and try and force the cooldowns from the Rogue himself. So we've got Evasion, Cloak, and Disperse from the Priest now. This is really good because now we can basically kill whatever, the Rested Rid won't be able to keep both of the targets up, and the Asa Rogue has dots on both of them. So we're able to get so much cleave pressure here, I land a trap onto the druid, the priest does master spell it, but it doesn't really matter because the druid now gets blinded, he has no trinket. So I'm doing damage to the rogue here, the rogue vanishes and then goes behind the pillar, I can still see him because I've got a hunter's mark, but I turn my attention to the priest, my priest uses death as well, and therefore we're able to land a kill on the shadow priest here. This game against PH Evoker um, is going to be fairly difficult because hunter and rep both do extremely high amounts of damage, but we're able to get the rep's wall fairly quickly. And then I send the Evoker, I get the spells on the Hodge, and then I'm able to land the trap. This forces the Evoker's Trinket. I'm now going to run behind the pillar to try and avoid some damage. However, the Hunter's pets are following me, so I put a Steel Trap on it, and then start doing damage to the Hunter again. And the reason I choose the Hunter is because he doesn't have any Hots on him. We get a Full Blind onto the Evoker. I can't follow this up with a Trap, sadly. But my Rogue is able to use a Sap. We get a Bop from the Paladin and the Hunter's Wall, and a Sack here as well. Um, so we're just doing damage to the Hunter. And now we swap to the Ret, just because of the sack, so we can maybe land a kill. I kick the Sleepwalk on the Evoker, and we are able to land a kill on the Ret here, even without the Evoker being in CC. This game we're against Holy Pala with DH and DK. So I'm starting on the DH, DK, sorry, because I can't reach the DH. Get a stun into a full trap on the Pala. The DH does not reverse this, and we also get Blur from the DH here as well. So this means that DH is now going to be a viable kill target. We get the Paladin's Trinket from the Blind into a sack on the DK. I now run over to the Paladin to purge his Divine Favor, and I'm staying close so that I can land a trap as soon as the sack is gone. I decide to shrink it here so that I can stay offensive, and now I'm just doing damage to the DH until I'm able to go get a trap onto the Holy Paladin. So now that my trap is off cooldown, I run up to him, I slow him, and then I'm able to get a full trap onto the Holy Paladin, and now we're just doing damage here. The DH drops fairly low, and we are able to get his Nether Walk here. We also get a Blessing of Protection from the Paladin. So they've overlapped this now, so this is really really good. The DH also isn't getting that topped in HP, so he's still low. I have my stun coming back in 7, um, so I know for a fact we're going to be able to win on that. I try and get away so I don't get cleaved and die, I also use my wall here just to reduce the damage I take. Get a stun on the pala into a full trap, he bubbles. Get a kidney on the DH along with the smoke bomb, and even though the paladin's in bubble, he's not able to get in in time, and therefore we're able to land a kill on the DH. This game we're against a sub rogue with an arcane mage and a holy priest. This game is going to likely be very fast because both teams do insane amounts of damage and the healers won't be able to heal the damage for very long. So I start doing damage to the arcane mage into a full stun on the priest and then a silence on the arcane mage as well. The arcane mage runs, I decide to chase him instead of hitting the rogue. He 
He then uses Mass Invis, but I'm able to get him out. He disorientates me into a full poly. This probably wasn't the best play, as now my healer can't really dispel me as I'm too far away. I probably should have just kept going on the rogue. But now I'm able to get some more damage out onto the Arcane Mage, and my rogue is dropping fairly low and they've still got CC, so I just need to be careful here. I do manage to solo force the mage's block though due to the damage of BM being very high. My rogue decides to bomb here while the priest is in angel form just outside of the bomb, so he's not actually able to heal here as well. The mage has used temp, um, so all the damage we do into that will be healed. So now my healer is in a full poly, I land a trap on the priest before this cheap shot. I decide to grave my trinket and I do survive this, and then out I decide to use my BM, exil and my wall just to ensure that I don't die here. We get a kidney onto the priest, and I'm just doing damage to the arcane mage. He gets guardian and altar, but he cancels altar fairly quickly because he could have died otherwise. The priest is able to heal him a little bit, but he's not able to top him. The Guardian has now ended and the Priest has used Holy Ward, but we are able to land a kill on the Arcane Mage here, even though the Priest isn't in CC because he's so low and the Priest doesn't have any instant healing which could top him. This game we're against a DK with a Warrior and a Rest of Shaman, so our main target is going to be the DK, and I get gripped in, stunned here, and I use Raw Sacrifice instantly on myself. We also get Dome. I'm not using Stun or Trap yet, just because I need to get Banner out of the way, and now Banner is out of the way, I'm able to start doing a bit of damage and then send my Stun onto the Shaman followed by a full trap. If I'd left the banner, then it would have been a half trap, uh, which really isn't that worth doing. We get the warriors die by the sword here, and then we put a blind onto the shaman. I also used turtle just because I didn't want to die, because uh, I wasn't on comms for these threes, so I wasn't entirely sure if I'd be safe or not. I use steel trap here to try and root something, but it roots one of the DK's ghouls instead. I drop extremely low here, but we get a full kidney onto the warrior. The Resto Shaman then runs into the bomb and the DK is just sitting on me as well. I use my Silence on the Resto Shaman and then we get a cheap shot which I then follow up with a trap. And now I'm just kiting as far away as I can because I want the warrior to outrange his Shaman whilst I'm still able to do full damage to him. So I'm just doing damage to him now and running behind the pillar just to try and reduce the damage that I'm taking. The Shaman does link but they're not able to get into it fast enough and therefore the warrior does die here. This game we're against a Mistweaver with an Ellie and a Demo Lock. So I just start on the Mistweaver because I want to try and stay as far back as possible and take as least damage as I can. So I get incapped here and I'm just doing damage onto the Mistweaver. My Rogue kicks him which locks him out for 5 seconds and then we get a cheap shot on him as well. We get his port here and well as well as his emblem and his wall. So this was a fairly good opener from us because we've got a lot of the Mistweaver's cooldowns that we wanted to get. We now have an option that we could either kill the Mistweaver perhaps, or we could keep doing damage to the DPS, because he doesn't have that many cooldowns. I land a kick here, and this forces the Mistweaver's, Mistweaver's cocoon. So now we know that we can kill either of the DPS as well. So we start hitting the Ellie Shaman, um, whilst I'm trying to stay far back and take as least damage as possible. Get a full stun into a trap on the Mistweaver, and we follow this up with a blind. He does trinket this, but he doesn't really have that much cooldowns for the DPS, and the Ellie decides to use his wall a bit too late when he's already too low, we get a bomb here, and although they ring it out, so we're not actually able to do anything with the bomb, we get a kidney onto the Mistweaver, but the Ellie is solo here, we're able to land a kill on him without even getting the trap on the Mistweaver. This game we're against a Restorer with a DH and a DK, so I hit the DH here because he's got eyes, however my Priest does get it before, but he still would have been able to get me and the Rogue out, um, so I get stunned here, get gripped, and dispelled as well. So now I'm just doing a little bit of damage to the DH and I want to get a trap. So I run over to get a little bit closer, stun the druid into a full trap. However, the DH does reverse it, but it's not the end of the world because we have to get reverse out of the way anyway. So now I'm just hitting the DK because he doesn't have that many hots on him and my rogue is hitting the DH, so we have to force the druid to split his hots. We get ironbark onto the DH and then I decide to hit the DH a little bit as well. Um, and now I'm swapping back to the DK because the DH is blurred, and I can't really do any damage into blur. At this point, we're in a fairly good position, because the DK doesn't have that many cooldowns left, and the Druid doesn't have his trinket, because he trinketed blind. We get a full trap here, and the DK uses his IBF. My rogue is still alive after the hunt, which is good. The DK tries to kite away, but because he's got all the rogue dots on him, and I'm able to do damage from range, we are able to land a kill here, because the Druid wasn't able to stop the DK. For this final game, we're against a Windwalker with a DK and a Resto Shaman. So I start doing damage to the DK, the Shaman puts down a Healing Tide, so therefore I go and kill the Healing Tide. At this point, I'm trying to stay as far away as possible whilst being able to kill the Healing Tide, just because I don't want to get gripped in over and over again. 
um, because otherwise I'll take a lot of unavoidable AoE and this will make it much harder for my healer to heal. Um, we get the other more from the Shaman, I get a stun onto him followed by a full trap. The Monk now Karmas and uses his wall as well. This means that in a few goes we are going to be able to kill the Monk, especially once the Shaman has used Link and Trinket. So the Monk is still low here and we get a full blind onto the Shaman and he Trinkets this and then Links. So now we know we're going to be able to kill fairly soon because they don't really have any defensive cooldowns left. So we get a Kidney onto the Shaman here and although he knocks me away I'm still able to get a trap on this Kidney. The Monk isn't really able to kite and he doesn't have any defensive left and therefore we're able to land a kill on him here. That's all for this video and I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know if there are any other comps you'd like to see me play and stay tuned for an updated overall BM guide as well as a specific solo shuffle BM guide. I hope you all have a great day. Peace out.